Very recently, AMD released several new processors for their brand new AM4 architecture, but these ones are not based on the Zen architecture. These are the Athlons and the APUs that are based on past generation architecture from the 28 nanometer process of the Kaveri line of processors, those FM2 Plus uh, socket processors that are just old news, but they're bringing them to the modern platform, and I actually really like this move, so let's look at why. Now specifically I want to talk about the Athlon uh, quad-core processor that is new to AMD and the AM4 platform, and that is the Athlon 950, which compares very much to the old 860Ks uh, from the AMD, except that the Athlon 950 is not unlocked, whereas the 850K, or rather the 860K, was unlocked and allowed quite a bit of overclocking, the 950 doesn't get the same treatment. That being said, the 950 gives us a 3.5 gigahertz base clock with a 3.8 uh, gigahertz turbo clock at a price point of just under $66 on uh, Newegg right now. The 860K for comparison gave us a base clock of 3.7 gigahertz and a turbo of 4.0 gigahertz. But again, with adequate cooling, you could easily push that into the mid four range. Um, and, and it just did great with that. In fact, it wasn't an overly hot processor. So as long as you had a decent aftermarket cooler, you definitely could hit those uh, 4.5, 4.6 gigahertz marks with the 860K. Now, not too long ago, I actually looked at the 860K paired with a GTX 660 and sort of tried to determine whether you could still game with modern AAA titles on that processor and for the most part yes you can you just have to be willing to uh, step down those graphical settings quite a bit um, and that's largely more of a GPU limitation with a lot of those games than it was a CPU limitation now obviously you're not going to be gaming on uh, super high uh, refresh rate panels like 1080p panels running at 144 Hertz with an 860k but you can run 1080p games at between that 30 and 60 FPS mark even with modern AAA games again as long as you're willing to play a little bit with the graphical settings depending on the GPU that you're pairing it with. And because the architecture of the Athlon 950 is based in the older generation, it's going to compare very much to that 860K, at least in performance, especially because we can't overclock it any. But it does give you the modern features of a new platform like DDR4 support, for instance, that the 860K just doesn't have. And that to me is actually the genius of the Athlon 950 at a 65, 66 price point, it's going to be competing against the Pentium processors of the current generation from Intel, but because AMD has given it more of a long-term uh, commitment to the AM4 platform, it gives you a very real and very good-looking upgrade path for the next few years as AMD sticks with that platform. So for instance, a use case scenario here may be that you wanna get up and running with a roughly $500 PC. And by the way, you can check out that parts list over here or in the description if you wanna take a closer look at that parts list. But essentially we're pairing an Athlon 950 there with a 1050 Ti graphics card, and that'll get you up and running at 1080p uh, playing modern AAA games at solid frame rates so long as you're not just uh, cranking all the settings to max. And then of course the beauty of this system is that down the line when you do eventually save up the money or just need a better processor, maybe you want to get into streaming or maybe you just want that upgrade, then you can just spend a couple hundred dollars and get something like a Ryzen 5 1600 and completely replace the processor with no need to replace the actual platform that it's sitting on and you can keep your B350 board, which I highly recommend over something like an A320 board just because it gives you overclocking ability uh, for processors that you may buy down the line that actually do have overclocking available like that Ryzen 5 1600. In addition to just getting up and running, this is also a really good way to get onto the AM4 platform, but maybe you're somebody that wants to wait on Zen 2 processors, so you are just gonna throw in that Athlon 950 and then sort of bide your time with uh, 1080p performance and then eventually upgrade to the newer processors beyond the Ryzen 5 1600, maybe something like a Ryzen 5 2600 if that ends up being their numbering scheme uh, moving forward. So you have that flexibility flexibility with AM4 that you might not necessarily have if you're buying a Pentium processor with the current generation of Intel processors uh, because Intel is moving, always moving to a different motherboard, different chipset uh, where you have to at least upgrade your motherboard with it. 
AMD is giving you the option to stick with one motherboard at least for a few more years. Now, I don't want to oversell this as if this processor is the answer to the budget uh, issue for PC gamers. The Pinion processors with their four threads, those processors are still giving us terrific value and frankly will probably give you better overall gaming performance because they have much stronger single threaded performance than their AMD counterparts but it at least gives us yet another option in the budget realm. And this lower cost budget option is really important for AMD to establish, largely because the Ryzen 3 processors didn't actually perform that much better than those Pinium processors, at least in the benchmarks that I've seen. And the Pinium processors are much cheaper than those Ryzen 3 parts. So giving gamers a lower cost uh, option than even Intel is giving them does uh, bode well for AMD's camp just in general. And looking at the performance of the 860K paired with just a GTX 660, it seems that the Athlon 950 does have a clear place in the marketplace for those people that are looking to get into PC gaming, but not looking to spend much more than a console, but still getting much better performance in a lot of cases than consoles can provide, and definitely giving a lot more flexibility than those consoles can because of the ability to tweak those graphical settings to your heart's content. So those are my thoughts on the Athlon 950, and for those of you wondering, there is an Athlon 970 variant with uh, slightly higher clock speeds. However, I've not seen that in uh, e-tailer stores like Amazon or on Newegg, so I'm not really sure of the availability of that yet. And I didn't mention the APUs that are for the AM4 platform yet because I really don't think those are a great option. Uh, they're over $100 for the quad cores, and for that price, you could get a Ryzen 3 processor with much better single-threaded performance and then just pair it with a really cheap graphics card that you find lying around um, or just a secondhand graphics card so obviously you can have a display which is really the only advantage those APUs offer over the Ryzen 3 parts. So in my mind the APUs are just something to stay away from at least until we actually see Zen based APUs on the AM4 platform. But as always I'm very curious to know what you guys think about these Athlon chips on the AM4 platform so let me know in the comments down below if you were a budget PC gamer getting ready to build out your rig would you go Athlon or would you go Pin let me know in those comments down below. And as always, if you like this content, give it a like, share, subscribe, and comment. All those things are super helpful to the channel. You can follow me on Instagram and on Twitter at Hoosier Hardware. They are the same tag for your convenience. And as always, we'll let YouTube queue up a couple more videos from my channel for you to watch. I'm Shane with Hoosier Hardware, and I'll see you guys in the next video.